Hey everybody, happy Friday. Woo! What do we have? Another week until Christmas? I don't even know. It's like it's it's charging at us. Um, and then New Year's. All right, so where am I? Let's make sure I am actually streaming. Oops, and hey, how about you gotta see my my mug. All right. So I got to show you guys today because I get so many questions about milk paint. I love milk paint. I love all different kinds of milk paint. But this is what happens when I call it going sideways, right? It's just not doing what I want it to do. All right. Let me grab this link for my fabulous text group people. And if you wanna be in the text group and know when I go live, just text hi to 860-385-6369. All right, so <clears throat> I have this whole um, fabulous milk paint tutorial that I wanted to show you guys. I'm obsessed, as I've shared before, with wall pockets. I love wall pockets. Um, they're, they're just the best. I don't know, it's like jewelry boxes to me and different kinds of boxes, I love them. And this one, you know, obviously is handmade. It's got the little tiny nails and I love it. I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna paint it in some milk paint today and show a really cool texture to everybody. Well, it didn't want to do that. So I applied, I'm using um, Toscana, which is Amy Howard at Home's Milk Paint. It's the first milk paint that I actually started with. Um, and I love it. it. It's just like I love Miss Mustard Seed. Um, it's really authentic. I have the bonding agent. I don't really ever use it. Because um, you're going to look at this and say, Jane, why didn't you throw in some bonding agent? Well, I didn't want to because I like it to chip a little bit. So <clears throat> this is chipping a lot. And if I just rub my hand on this, it's, it's just all chipping off. In fact, I want to move my paint that I mixed up over so I don't get chips in it. Though I'm sure that's a technique that somebody's using, right? But it's just chipping too much too, too much. And when this happens, what I do, grab my sanding block <clears throat> and I have to sand this away. And it comes off really easily because it's just not adhering, bonding with this substrate. So I really just want to start anew. <coughs> and as you know, I'm getting over being sick, so this dust might bother me. But this is why I always say, you will always hear me say, do a test. If you're doing a piece of furniture, um, pick maybe a back of a leg or something, because you don't want to end up, you know, first of all, mixing up a ton of milk paint. Then it doesn't stick, and then you're having to do this. And if you're somebody that flips, you don't want to, you know, time is money. You don't want to spend tons of time. You know what? Did I send? I don't know if I sent, if I hit send on the um, text for everybody to watch. So I'm just going around. I'm getting rid of all this loose paint. Okay, that's good. And I did clean this before. I used um, Clean Slate, Amy Howard clean, clean Slate. It wasn't really dirty. All right. 
So when this happens, let me get rid of these big chunks. Take it off, wipe it down. If I had my microfiber cloth, I would use that, or a, a tack cloth would be perfect. But you want to get rid of all of this. We had a little bit, or there was a little bit of bleed, but I didn't care. I kind of wanted that. You know, I, I knew this was going to have a little bit, but this was really bad. So now what I do is I grab... My Zinsser Bullseye Shellac. This is the only um, crime, primer shellac that I'll use because it just it just seals. It just seals. And then the milk paint. I hope to show you today what the milk paint does when we use it on top of this. Now, I guess Rust-Oleum bought Zinsser Bullseye and they used to have a date because this has a shelf life, you guys. And you don't want to use really old shellac. Um, but I guess now you can go to their website and look at the lot number. That's really important. Mine is old. We'll see what happens. And then you're going to use... And old, this is a really good use. Why isn't, oh my gosh, today's going to be, huh, angle one. Well, hopefully you guys are seeing this all right. Um, use an old brush, okay? This is alcohol-based. So what I do is I shellac what I need to shellac, then I let the brush dry and I just throw it out. Okay, some people just real serious woodworkers that are using this all the time will keep their brushes actually sticking into the shellac. All right, and I mixed this before and because it's alcohol based, it dries really, really quickly. So I'm just gonna brush this on Get the inside first. And I would suggest that you do this in a really well ventilated area because it's alcohol based. And let me tell you, it just, you could just smell it rising off this piece. All right, and then I'm just going to brush around. I haven't dipped my brush back in. A little bit goes a long way with this. And I'm just going to go around. Careful you don't get drips. You do not want that. You can sand them off if you get them, but it's best to just avoid it in the beginning. Now, push that back. I'm going to take my blow dryer and dry this. I'm using my can opener to push it here. Put this on low. Now remember, this is alcohol, so I wouldn't suggest um, using anything that is super hot, you know, like a heat gun.
it's still tacky, it's got to be totally dry. I'm blowing off the chunks of paint. See how how this is drying. That's pretty good. I'm gonna turn it over. Naturally, I got some of the chips because I didn't clean my area. So be neat about this so you don't have the same situation. I'm gonna give it a little stir and just do the back. I'm going right over that milk paint. Want to get any of those little beads down the edge? Looks good. I'm hitting everything with my blow dryer. this to dry just over here and I'll show you what I mixed up and I'm using artist brushes today because it's a small piece <coughs> Ooh, the dust Woo! so I have Toscana milk paint <coughs> excuse me um, this is Strasburg white and this is Gustavian, I'm sorry, Scandinavian gray, which I love. So I'm gonna close these so I don't knock them over. And what I do, I wanted these to be a little bit thicker because I'm creating texture. Wow, my camera's acting so odd today. Hopefully this is, this is going out to you guys. But um, I mix these up a little bit thicker than I normally do. And when it starts to sit, when it's sitting for a while, it'll, it'll get like this kind of really thick base at the bottom. You just stir. You just reincorporate that all back into the water because milk paint's natural and the pigments, the minerals that are in it just tend to settle, and that's just the way it is. That's why we love milk paint, those of us that use it. I hope you guys try it if you haven't yet. So there it is. Right? That's our Scandinavian gray. And here is the Strasbourg white. Same thing. It's thicker at the bottom. You just give it a good stir. Just like that. And then every time you dip your brush in, you wanna give it a little bit of an agitation. You wanna agitate it. All right, let's see how we're doing. I'm just gonna do the back because it's drying really nicely. Let me just hit it again. Close up my um, Zinsser Bullseye, and I'm using the clear shellac. If you go 
don't mistakenly buy the white shellac unless you want it. All right, getting my brush out of here. Cover that up, that stuff is, woo! All right, so we're gonna hit it again, real fast. the hot air was heating this up and not allowing it to dry. So now I'm using cool air. Like I said, if you're doing this at home, you just let it dry. You just put on your shellac, let it dry naturally. That is the best way. All right, so since the back is still a little bit tacky, I'm gonna do the front. And we'll do this section right here so I can show you this technique. Let me grab my artist brushes. Dry this off, and I'm actually going to start with the Strasburg White. You give it a swirl like this. I'm just hitting the inside, and I'm pouncing. I'm pouncing this paint on because we're creating texture. And hopefully now with the addition of the shellac, I'm not gonna have the peeling, but we'll see. All right, and I'm just gonna get it along this edge so I hit my phone all right then you can let yours dry right naturally I'm gonna use the blow dryer try not to hit my phone again See it start to crackle. 
And when I do want to create just a crackle finish, this is what I do. I don't even test it. I put down the shellac, put on my paint. I could do two coats of the Strasburg White and let it crackle like that, right? It just does it by itself because of the um, shellac. Oh, camera, what are you doing? Wow. Maybe it's because we're getting a nor'easter today. It's just raining here in Connecticut, but boy. Okay. I just want to make sure this is totally dry. And it feels pretty good. Now, I'm going to put on another coat. Look at that nice crackle you get, right? Just so you guys could see what it looks like with um, just the white paint and the shellac underneath it. Okay, so you give it a swirl. And again, I'm pouncing. And if you want, you can make your you can mix up your milk paint to be really thick. If you really want to create create like a super textured surface. All right, looks good. Again, you dry it. By using the blow dryer, you're, you can also really push it to crackle. This will be interesting. There's some slight chipping happening, I think. See that texture? Very, very cool. And yep, it's chipping. So see what's happening here. Whoop. Right, you see that paint lifting. Let's see, I'm gonna really, really dry it and see what happens. And there it goes. All right, so now it looks like a desert, right? The cracking, the chipping. So the name of this tutorial is When Milk Paint Goes Sideways. I had a whole technique that I wanted to show you guys today. And because this is happening, right, there's two things I'm thinking, right? Well, one I know, the original painted, I mean, the original varnish finish 
on this little wall pocket just was not milk paint friendly. Um, so I decided to use my go-to, which is shellac. And look what's happening with the shellac. Doesn't matter. All of this is just being, it's like it's shaking this paint off. And I've had this happen just a handful of times. And what I would tell you at this point, you know, I could really, really want milk paint um, and push it again. I could try using a bonding agent. I could get new Zinsser Bullseye Shellac because I suspect mine is old. But I'm not going to do that. I think that this piece just isn't, it just isn't going to have the milk paint on it. It doesn't care. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape and sand this off, which will take me like not a lot of time. Look at this, you guys. It just, it just comes off. And then I'll get my scraper for the rest of this. And I'm actually going to come back next week um, on Monday and I'm going to do um, a beautiful paint finish, but I'm going to use a chalk-based paint as my base, okay? Because we know chalk paint sticks to like everything, right? Everything. So when I have something like this where it just doesn't want to do it, and I've done this with pieces of furniture also where it just didn't work. It just didn't work. That's when I'm like, okay, I'm not going to force this. It doesn't want it. And I'm going to take this off. I'm going to put a coat of chalk-based paint, true chalk paint. And then we're going to carry on with a milk paint finish. So everybody, I hope you learned something from that. Make sure you check the date on your Zinsser Bullseye Shellac. You can even call Rust-Oleum because when it gets old, you, you can't use it for what you intended to, like making milk paint stick, right? It just doesn't work. So I will be back here on Monday. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful Friday and happy painting this weekend. Are you wrapping gifts? Are you sending out cards? Are you still shopping? Um, you know, whatever you're doing, have fun with it. And